Hello everyone and welcome to the channel and yesterday Google released Android 15 QPR Beta 1 and I have it installed on my Pixel 6 Pro to show you each and every new change. Unfortunately, I got a broken knee and my movement is very limited but I didn't want to miss out creating this video because it includes some of the new exciting changes that we should see in the upcoming December update which is the feature drop for Pixel devices. So let's find out what's new in Android 13 QPR Beta 1. So let's start with the update size and the build number here on the 6 Pro the update size was 1.99 gigabytes and I was already running the stable version of Android 13. The build number is T1B1.220819.006. And if your device is already enrolled to the Android beta program, you might see this update pushed to your phone without noticing. So if you don't want this to happen, you can go ahead and use the link in the description below and opt out from the beta program if you want to continue using the stable versions. But if you want to try some of the new exciting features we might see in December update, you can go ahead and install it on your phone. And now let me show you what's new. Let's start with the most exciting change in this update, which is the spatial audio support. Now, when you go to settings and then sound and vibration, and then scroll down a little bit, you will see here a new menu item called spatial audio. And when you go inside, you have the option to activate the feature for the wired headphones and also it works with the Bluetooth devices. It says here in the description, audio from compatible media becomes more immersive. And let me also connect here my Pixel Buds to show you the spatial audio toggle. After connecting the device and then go to the Bluetooth settings and then tap the gear icon next to my Pixel Buds, you will see here the spatial audio toggle and it's already activated. Then I signed in to my Apple Music account to play some of the spatial audio songs. But unfortunately, I didn't notice any difference in the audio quality with the toggle on or off. So it seems like it's just a toggle for now. It doesn't do anything in reality. But at least we are sure that this feature should come in December. And this is one of the exciting features I was waiting for in Android 13. Now let's talk about the home and recent apps screen. And the first change is in the overlay menu animation in the home screen. When you tap and hold on an empty space, you will see a slightly better animation. It's a slightly slower and more refined when compared to the stable version of Android 13. The second change is in the Google search widget. Now in QPR beta one, it will take you to the system wide search where you can search for apps and also web results together. And instead of taking you to the same old Google app search like the stable version. You will also notice that Google is back again to the unified search, which includes your web results and local results at the same time. So for example, when I search for the word Android, it will show me the app and some web results and also some uh, stuff from the device itself, like the settings. But when I do the same thing on the stable version of Android 13, as you see, I'm getting only stuff from settings, but it doesn't include anything from the web. And this is one of the things we already saw in the beta versions of Android 13, but Google decided to remove it from the stable version and once more is back again to the QPR beta one. But if you don't want the web results to be included in your search results, you can simply go to your home settings and then search your phone and turn off the toggle which says search the web. This toggle doesn't exist in the stable version. So when I go to home settings, search your phone, I only have shortcuts, people settings and pixel tips, but I don't have anything about the web. And this is a new addition to the QPR beta one. Change number three in the home screen. Now when you pause any of the apps on your home screen, you will only see a gray circle without an icon inside, which is different from the stable version that shows the same exact icon, but it's a grayed out. Now you only get a gray circle. Now let's talk about the recent apps screen and the only change I'm going to show you here is the new animation you get when you double tap to switch the apps position. So as you see, they do this new animation that doesn't exist in the stable version of Android 13. Next, the notifications shade and the quick settings area. Now when you expand your quick settings, you will see a much bigger gap between the brightness slider and the status bar. Change number two is the new animated icons in some of the tiles. So for example, when I go to the um, auto rotate tile, for example, and then tap on it, you will see the icon is now animating, which wasn't the case before. And you will see the same thing in the battery saver tile. 
as you see it will give you this little nice animation when you turn on the feature which doesn't exist in the stable version so some of the tiles will give you this new animation and some of them don't so for example when you tap on the internet tile nothing happens same as home and so on and so forth and I hope Google will include this in all the tiles in the future because it looks really nice change number three is related to the media controls now when you tap on the media switcher you will no longer see the unconnected devices so for example the pixel buds used to be connected to my pixel 6a and I still see it here as an option available for me to connect which is very confusing because I have it inside the case already and if I tapped on this option nothing will happen but now in Android 13 QPR beta 1 the devices that are not currently available will not show up in the uh, uh, in the media switcher and they only show up when you connect to the device so here as you see now i have the option to connect to my pixel buds and once i put them back inside the case this option will disappear immediately like this change number four and the last one in this chapter is the consolidated security and the privacy tile is now available to add to your quick settings but unfortunately it's a grayed out and it doesn't do anything as you see here but by the end of this video i will try to use an adb command to activate the style and show you how it looks in the last chapter of this video and now it's time for today's sponsor if you are interested to purchase original windows 10 and office keys head over to cdkeyoffer.com using the links in the description below then apply my special promo code id20 to get extra 25 percent discount windows 10 oem key will cost you 16.23 dollars which is very affordable to complete your purchase choose your preferred payment method input the details and once the payment is done you will be redirected to the orders screen to view your code click on the view keys slash codes button then click on get the key to activate your windows 10 oem key copy the code from the website head over to your windows settings then system scroll all the way down and click on about then product key and activation and finally click on a change paste the code in the text field and click on next then activate and now your original windows key got activated for more offers please check the links in the description below and now let's get back to the review now let's talk about the new changes under settings now the biometric authentication card looks a little bit better in this build so as an example i'm gonna go inside my wi-fi settings and tap on share to get the overlay card and as you see the white bar at the bottom is now gone and it's floating on top of the home indicator or the navigation bar at the bottom of the screen which looks slightly better next under apps and then assistant and then hold power for your assistant you will see a slightly different page in this build now you have two radio buttons one for the digital assistant and one for the power menu and once you choose the power menu all the options for the digital assistant will disappear to avoid any confusion but other than this they do exactly the same thing next under notifications and then do not disturb and then schedules now you will see a new item here called the game dashboard that doesn't exist in the previous version you only have gaming which also exists in this build but when you go inside game dashboard you will see more options first you have the option to turn the feature on or off or you can keep it on and only turn off the floating icon of the game dashboard but after turning off the toggle i tried to play asphalt 9 and I still get the floating icon here on the side so this option doesn't do anything for now and I'm not sure how you would access your gaming dashboard if you don't have the floating icon so maybe Google in the future will give you another option to access the gaming dashboard without the floating icon but for the time being this toggle doesn't do anything and finally you have the ability to turn that do not disturb for games on or off from here next display and now when you tap on the brightness level you will see a slightly different slider it doesn't have the same padding like the stable version but now it fills the entire width and when you scroll all the way down on both you will see the increased touch sensitivity option is now called the screen protector mode both do the exact same thing but the name is different and the last change under display when you go to screensaver you will see a slightly different thumbnail for the colors option it's now more presentable and it shows exactly what you will get if you chose this option on top of this the when to start menu item has been shifted towards the top so you don't need to scroll all the way down to see it 
and that's pretty much it. And the last change under settings, now when you go to system and then developer options, you will see a new toggle here called enable Bluetooth low energy. So let me show you how it looks. Here it says enable Bluetooth low energy, but unfortunately the option is grayed out. Now let's talk about some of the upcoming features in December update. Some of them I managed to activate using an ADB command and the others I have screenshots for. So let me start with the one I managed to activate, which is the consolidated security and the privacy type. As you see, it will give you this redesigned page, which is full of options and a lot of things you can do when it comes to your security and the privacy. First, it will show you how many alerts you have. It says here, I have 11 alerts, and this is the first alert in the list, and the rest of the alerts are hidden under this option. So let's start with the first alert. It says here, review app with access to your notifications. And it says here that the pixel stand has access to my notifications, so I can remove the access immediately by tapping on this option, or I can show more options like this. And as you see, it depends on the app name. In this case, it says Android Auto. So you can continue with the alerts and keep checking your security settings. After that, you have four tiles. The first one is to switch off the camera access the mic axis and the location axis. And lastly, you have here more settings. And when you tap on more settings, it will take you to the security and the privacy page under your settings. That will show you the exact same information as we saw in the tile. But here you have even more options like the app security, for example. Here it will take you right away to the Play Store. Then you have the screen lock, the fingerprint unlock, the Google security checkup the Find My Device, the Security Update, Google Play System Update, and after that you have the Privacy Dashboard, Permission Manager, Privacy Controls, and more security settings, and also privacy settings. So everything is consolidated into one page instead of going back and forth between different menus. Now you have everything under your fingertips so you can manage everything with ease. Another feature we might see in Android 13 is called the battery health, which is similar to the iOS battery health feature. It will give you one of four ratings. It's either poor, fair, good, or excellent. And then depends on your battery condition, you will get some information explaining what this condition exactly means. You can also check the capacity of your battery. And also it says here the condition or what this condition is capable of doing. It says, he's, it says here peak performance while the battery is poor, which doesn't make sense. It seems like this page is somehow doesn't show the right information for now, but I'm really excited to see this feature in Android because it makes a, a big difference when you purchase a used phone. You need to know what about the battery health of this phone, and I really appreciate adding this feature. The third feature we might see in Android 13 is the clear calling feature. This feature you can activate right now using an ADB command, but I tried this command with my phone and nothing happened. But let's take a look here at the description of the feature. It says the clear calling reduces background noises during calls. And when you take a look here at the uh, settings page, it says clear calling works for calls on most mobile networks and it's not for, or it's not available for Wi-Fi calling. Content from your call is not sent to Google, so Google is giving you some peace of mind that your calls are not shared with anyone, but they are trying to reduce the background noise using this feature. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are all the new changes in Android 13 QPR Beta 1. Please let me know in the comments if I missed anything. But for now, thank you so much for watching and see you the next video.